up next sharing, we have Uri Kabiri. Um, Uri, uh, how's it going today? Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Abram. Uh, I'm doing well. And thanks for having me. Oh, we're happy to have you. Absolutely. Well, let's, let's give you the stage, Uri. Uh, the stage is now yours. OK. So my name is Uri Kabiri. I moved to Nashville from Israel. And uh, I was uh, several years ago. And I want to share a, a very dramatic part of my life that taught me a lot. And so I just want to share a little of my background. I'm a music producer and a, and a songwriter and a healer, energy healer and a channeler. I've been devoting my life to it and I've been doing it for decades. So my parents divorced when I was a baby. My mom raised me on herself, by herself, and uh, she gave me everything. And we, the family was her and me. And then I opened my uh, recording studio at 12. And um, I, was, I worked very hard. I was very successful in Israel. And one day, uh, a person uh, scammed me in the studio. He had me work for him, and he didn't pay me. And I sued him, and I won. And I, I uh, didn't get anything from him. And the case was just left in the air. And then I, uh, I decided to leave Israel to Nashville because I fell in love with it when I visited here. And I just uh, the reason I'm saying all of this is to teach you that there is a way to, to see life as what it is or what's behind it. Or there are so many angles to look at life and to experience everything. And so I... I uh, moved to Nashville in the middle of a, a financial scam for my mom and myself. My mom trusted uh, my mom uh, trusted the wrong person and paid all of our money too. And um, that was in the middle of I mean a minute after I moved here, and I couldn't even finish my immigration process. And so I had to leave Nashville to go back to Israel to save my mom from the scam. And everything was looked hopeless. The, my recording studio that I had in Israel for years was shipped here because I, I thought I left Israel for good. And uh, nobody knew I came back to Israel. We were in deep debt because of the, the scam. And my main source of income was the studio, but it, it wasn't in Israel. So I needed a miracle urgently. And the only ray of light in my life was a high school reunion to a little something to cheer myself up, even for one night. And I went there and I met a woman who went to school with me. And what we when we shared what we do nowadays, she told me she teaches theta healing, a method of healing I've never heard about before. I've studied three methods before. And um, what she told me and the way she talked about it, the way she described it was larger than life. I knew that was the miracle I, I was waiting for a method of healing that treats any imaginable thing and creates miracles. What are the odds? She could have been anything. She could have been something boring. Well, she, she was that. So that was my miracle. And I studied a week later and I knew my life would change and that's what happened. Everything changed. I started creating miracles. It was just like living in a movie. And the first miracle was get over the scam, which happened. And then uh, after a year living with my mom at 42, I moved back to Nashville. Although a minute earlier, I didn't have even money to, to buy a plane ticket. And um, so this time, after three and a half months in heaven, without the scam on my back, um, I got a phone call from one of my healing clients. And she would al always call me to when people were in urgent need of help or uh, injured or cancer or dying or something. And she told me something about a woman in a car accident. And um, I thought that's another person she's telling me about it, but she said, no, you didn't get me. Your mom was hit by a car and the whole world froze. And um, what do you say? I mean, that, that stuff happens to other people. So I wished her on the phone, is she alive? And so she was 72 at the time, and she, uh, crossed, the, she crossed the street unfocused. I, I know it was because of the scam. She didn't forgive herself to, for trusting that person. And um, 
So she was unfocused and the driver didn't look either. So because of a few seconds of uh, lack of awareness, she broke her lower half of the body, which indirectly caused a severe brain damage. And she, uh, she laid in the hospital in a state of coma and it was impossible to wake her up. And the first letter from the hospital was so dramatic. She's either, uh, she's, there's no telling if she's gonna ever uh, get out of the coma when and how, in what condition. And all the doctors and professors that I talked with the same night um, said the same thing. She's either going to die or stay a vegetable for the rest of her life. And I left Nashville for the second time. We thought the, the scam was the most dramatic thing. And then the accident happened and uh, made everything pale in comparison. So from the airport in Israel, I went straight to the hospital and saw my mom connected to all those wires and she looks like a corpse and uh, i just started healing her daily what I, I told the doctors with all due respect until you show me a cold corpse i'm gonna keep doing whatever in my power and i only studied the, that method a year prior so after a few days of healing her when doctors are calling me crazy to my face and rolling their eyes and uh, okay if you believe in those nonsense after a few days she got out of the coma and started healing like crazy and um so that 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 was so dramatic and and step by step it was just like raising a baby every day she learned something new to to use her right arm and left arm and it was so exciting to see and to know that I, I was the only one who believed in her and saw a vision of how she's getting out of it. And um, I don't have siblings. I don't have uh, other families. So, so it had to be me. And it was all on my shoulders. And I'm so glad it had to be me because it forced me, in, instead of being my uh, biggest tragedy ever, it forced me to, to be the best healer I could be. Otherwise, she would have died. And it turned to be my biggest gift ever. And that story affected me so much uh, and showed me so much and inspired everyone who, who listened to it because it shows you that it doesn't matter how things look like as long as you have faith. And, um, and then as a part of the process, I, I witnessed a ther physiotherapy lesson. And the physio physiotherapist uh, told my mom, you'll never walk again. And my mom was devastated. She cried so much. And I took the, the therapist uh, away from my mom and I told her, where do you find that cruelty? I mean, how could you? And she said, what? I just want her to, to hear the truth. And I said, whose truth? There's more than one truth. And in my method, I can theta healing makes you remove you're able to remove blocking beliefs from your system so I removed that belief from my mom and also from myself because I too heard her say that my mom will never walk and guess what the next day my mom did walk no thanks to that lady so that that whole thing made me so much stronger it changed my facial features it changed my voice I feel like I'm made of steel and nobody's able to wait to, to scare me with anything. So plugging a song or, you know, pitching a song or Corona days, I mean, means nothing to me because I know it's all a gift and I know we will get through it like I did. My, I mean, everybody who lives life gets through something. It, our, our lessons are not supposed to be pleasant. They're supposed to teach us. And whatever needs to happen for us to learn our lessons will happen. I have so many stories and examples about it. And life taught me and that story, those, those two stories combined taught me. And um, so I know that our body is like a map and uh, everything is, is, is a symbol, like why we're able to feel pain or a scratch, or an itch, or or to hear a tone in our ears. It's all a lesson because we're so busy and we're so preoccupied and, and distracted 
by our life by by staying busy i'm talking before the corona days and um so we're too busy to pay attention to the lessons so that's why we we're all stopped the whole world were stopped and paused because of corona days because we're supposed to think and get to know ourselves and for that story that story my, my mom was very uh, busy and her life went nowhere she was busy helping others she forgot about herself and life had to pause her because she had to have time to think to to get to know herself to to get to know to recalculate her route to know where she's going and that's what's happening that's what's happening with us uh, these days these are such special days and my mom was not a victim i was not a victim and we're not victims during these days and to just be able to to look at how that story could have been my biggest tragedy or her biggest tragedy my mom got got a second chance i got a second chance and when i finally returned to nashville i returned like like a winner because i just retrieved my mom from the dead and nobody is caring with anything and i now i teach other people being a healer and being a mentor and being a channeler i i give them hope and i teach them how to look life at life from a different angle and we could always do that so it i, I told you um our body is like a map and i'll give you just a small example of a, another thing i have a friend who 20 years ago had a car accident and since then he had a metal bar in his hand and uh in his arm and that one day he started hurting and he called me and the first thing i do with uh, theta healing is scan you energetically like a scanner and it gives me a picture of what's ready to be healed and i scanned him and i saw his arm bent around his back and i've heard twisting my arm so i asked him is anyone or anything trying to force your will or trying to force you to do anything against your will and he said um, yeah oh yeah you know what that started hurting that started hurting the day that started happening that person started forcing my will and i said are you trying to uh you started to get it it's so it's such a simple because when you have a metal bar in your arm and it's twisted like your will is trying to be that's that's a simple and so the pain wasn't real and it took us uh uh it took us five minutes over the phone to to remove that belief that he has to be a people pleaser and to, he has to to stay away from being authentic and to give people what they wanted from him, of him and after five minutes i asked him is it better and he said better i have a new arm so so i i the reason i'm telling that is whatever you are going through whether it's physical or or mental or or you're confused or feel out of balance there's always a reason behind that and if you ask a question uh preferably an open question uh just being curious not angry just curious there is a reason if you want to know it ask questions you can ask divinity you can ask your friends you can ask yourself and i'm also here for you if you want to contact me through facebook or ask for help or ask me a question i love helping people and i devoted my life to it and i'm really thankful for um for y'all to, to to have me here and to give me an opportunity to share my story and um that's it if, if you want to give me some comment or to give me some feedback and also i want to remind everyone that one a, one day is the day Thank you so much Thank for you. sharing. I, I want to acknowledge you, Uri, for, for being in such a, I can only imagine how you felt, but being in such a, with your, mo with your mom being in the coma and dealing with all those emotions. And, but I want to acknowledge you for seeing the opportunity despite how dark it felt. And that, that's, that takes a lot because it's, it's so easy to just fall to our own devices just like, oh, life's just, just to fall in the victim chair. I've done that so much of my life, you know, it's something, one little thing happens and it's like, oh, I can't do this and everything's terrible. And it's like, it's so easy to fall in that, but you found it within yourself to, to not succumb to that. And you ended up 
being a force for healing and a force to help your mom overcome it. And that's beautiful. So I just want to acknowledge you. That's, that's awesome. Thank you. And another thing I learned from it is when you look in hindsight, you could understand how life is being, being built and it's so wonderful. I mean, it's so uh, planned geniusly. Everything is combined. How even that story, just a, a year prior, I, 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 I found myself in Israel and I just happened to bump into her and she, everything is, is connected and it's just amazing. I admire life. Absolutely. That's that's so great that you you can you you can see it as a blessing even even when things are uncertain. There's there's I've said this before, but there's collateral beauty even in times of tragedy, and it's it's hard to see because we're kind of our eyes are just squinting. We're focused on what's all the things that are seemingly bad and terrible and scary. And oh, I don't know about this, but but when we actually open up our eyes and we'll see something that we didn't see before. And I think that's what your story and your sharing is a is a perfect example of that. And it it kind of it sounds like it kind of guided you to helping other people. And I mean that's pr pretty much what brought you here. You know, you're and that's the work you're doing. And that's and that's that's beautiful that you're you're able to tra tra transmute that pain to transcend that 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 uncertainty into something that is beneficial to us all. Yeah. And so many people heard the story and say, wow, that's so sad. And I said, you do realize she's alive. She could have been dead. But what's sad about it? It's a blessing. There was something I really, actually a lot of uh, that I really appreciated about your sharing. But the one thing that stood out the most is like your conviction not to take anyone else's word on it. Like to, to kind of turn back and look at your own experience and your own self and go, okay, does what they're saying really feel true to me? And you know, that's something I've really been looking at in my own life a lot too. And there was something, I was talking to a friend maybe a week or so ago and just like playing with this idea and like, I just, this, these words came out. I would love to live in a world free of the tyranny of conviction. And over the last couple of weeks, like that has, like that phrase has played into so many different lessons in my daily, daily life. Like, you know, when I step back and really question my own beliefs, my own reality, that has opened up a lot of compassion and the ability to empathize and see how another person got to where they are and what they may be stuck in. And, um, and then with, with that, like, it's also realizing that, it's also our convictions that that prevent us from creating our own our own destiny, our own reality. You know, like we the the less I believe, the more seems to be able to man, be manifested into my life. And uh, that's that's just huge. So thank you for that. And and theta healing, healing in particular, like I've had some experience with it. It's I really appreciate it. I I really do. So thank you for coming on and and sharing about that. And like just opening up people to the possibility that the experts don't know everything. That we can't know everything. And that there's a deeper place of knowing within us that we can use, that we can rely on and trust without having to trust anyone else. It's so crucial to stay open and curious, like the kids we used to be. And it's so tempting to become the adult and become, you know, gray and to, it was so tempting to believe those doctors. And they told me, you know, the odds are 0 0.00. I said, I don't care about the numbers. What if she's the first one to ever make it? But don't worry, you have to make it again. People of that age, that condition die. But you're not talking about my mom. You're talking about the past. She's now. She's her. She's specific. Talk about her. What if she's the first one to ever make it? And she was the first one to ever make it. Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> that's amazing. That's that's beautiful. I mean, I, and I thank you for being who you are, Uri, because that's... You know, that's, it's easy to get to fall into what the models and what the facts and statistics. And it's like, that's, uh, there's like, I forget the exact quote, but it's all, all models are, are, are false. They're just, they're just 
built on the past. I mean, they can be helpful to make a decision. Like this is a, you can look at something and see the statistics and make an educated decision, but it has nothing to do with reality. It's just a, it's just a model. It's just a statistic. It's not what so, it's not what it is. And I, I think it's, that's, that is healthy, a healthy skepticism that, you know, that makes us, you know, we, it could go either way, but it's when we, we who says like, what, why, why make it a statistic and a number when that's not what's actually happening right now? You know, why, why fall into that false, it's, it's just a false concept and it's not actually reality. So I, I really appreciate you sharing. It was really powerful, Uri. We have so much power in our hands. If you want to choose, if you want to choose to believe that uh, reality is something external, go ahead. It will prove the, that you're right. But if you want to believe and connect to the fact that you're able to create your own reality, a desired one rather than an undesired one, it's, you have so much power. Everything is possible.